Dialga is not a team, that, not a Pokemon that we've seen too much often, has it? Not too much, and you know, Dialga does have a lot of synergy with Groudon. You know, that telepathy ability. You yeah. know, that allows Groudon to be able to go for earthquakes or be able to. If it is, if it is earthquake, you know, it is yeah. more accurate option. Not exactly sure what Grayson's going to be opting for here but, just yet, but for the team that you cannot see on your screen, Akatsuki Sakamoto, he's using Rayquaza, Sylveon, Smeargle, Groudon, Cresselia, and Talonflame. Yeah, and Sylveon's a Pokemon that was featured in the 2000 or the J Japanese National Championship. You know, yeah. Sylveon is like Xerneas, but a bit weaker. But at the same time, it doesn't take up a restricted slot. Exactly. Right? And it also has a um, really quite interesting priority attack. Obviously, it's got Quick Attack, which it learns when it's, uh, when it's as an EV. But due to the Pixelate ability from, um, from Sylveon, it actually gets a little bit of a boost and turns into Fairy type attacks as well. So a little bit more damage off output there as well. Right. And you know, going into this tournament, a lot of people have been looking at these Groudon Rayquaza cores thinking, is this going to be enough to be able to take the World Championships? You know, it was enough to take the Japanese National Championships, and usually that's a good reflection as to how a how good of a team is. You know, if it's able to win the Japanese National Championships, that's the team to look out for. So we'll have to see exactly how it goes up right now against Grayson's team of Groudon Dialga. Uh, Groudon Dialga, you know, a lot of people are trying to make Dialga work, right? Yep. It has, access to trying to use it at US Nationals, right? it has access to Trick Room, and one thing that's going to be cool is going to be seeing how this Clefairy plays out. Oh, here we go. So we're going to jump into round three of the World Championships live from San Francisco, California. For Akatsuki Sakamoto, we have Smeargle and Groudon. And for Grayson Garen, we're going for the Dialga Salamence, so a double dragon lead. Uh, something that we don't see too often anymore. Uh, we do see the Intimidate go off. That might be affecting this Groudon, depending on what kind of Groudon this is. Is it going to be physical or is it going to be special? If it's anything like the Japanese National Championship team, though, it's probably going to be a special. So this Intimidate might not matter at all. So we've got that, we've got the Dialga on the opposing side of the field, who doesn't want to be taking too many Fire-type attacks due to it being a Steel-type. So with the Desolate Land up, obviously that is some big damage that uh, Atsuki, uh, sorry, Akatsuki could get off here. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, this Salamence can hit pretty hard. You know, Hyper Voice does hit Groudon for its more, uh, especially weak side. Yep. So we'll have to see exactly what Grayson decides to do here. Uh, Dialga can go on the offensive, but it does have to be careful about Smeargle and Groudon. You know, you don't want to get your Pokemon knocked knocked out or put to sleep right off the bat. That's a bad way to start, you know, this round three. Both players are already off to a 2-0 start. You know, they're pretty happy with where they are, but they're nowhere near done for the day yet, right? Exactly, and we talked about how important it is to um, try and get an early momentum build in um, in this in these uh, tournaments. So going 2-0 from the very start is a great thing to have. And we're going to see a mega evolution coming out from Grayson Garen here. Salamence is going to trade that Intimidate ability for the Aerialate ability, turning normal attacks into Flying-type attacks. And we're actually going to see a Protect coming out from Dialga there. Doesn't want to take any super effective Ground or Fire-type attacks. And we're going to see a Wide Guard coming out from Smeargle there. Going to protect against Hyper Voices from Salamence. And Salamence is going to go for that Hyper Voice there, protected from the Wide Guard. And what is Groudon going to go for here? Groudon is going to go for the eruption, gonna do some big damage to Salamence. It's gonna leave it with just under half HP, but obviously Dialga, due to its protect, is not worried about that at all. And we do see Smear get activate its Moody. Uh, not exactly sure what that boost was. The drop was evasion. Okay, well that might be relevant, but the important thing there is that you know Dialga kind of got out of there scot free. Uh, Akatsuki making a great, great call right there to go for the wide guard, protect his Groudon from getting hit. Yeah, I mean, that was a really great read from his side of the field, noticing that um, Dialga might want to protect here just because it is in a bad position up against that Groudon. And Salamence, obviously, with its um, with its hitting being able to hit um, uh, Groudon on its suit, but like slightly less um, built-out special defense stat, uh, having that Hyper Voice blocked is really important for him. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, that Smeargle, if it's carrying a Focus Sash, it is still intact. As we do see Smeargle go for another wide guard here. So wide guard there, and uh, Salamence actually did go for a hyper voice, it looks like. And there's going to be another eruption coming out from the ground on. It's going to hit both Pokemon. Dialga survives with a sliver of health, but Salamence is off the field. Massive amounts of damage right there, and Dialga does get to go for one move. As we do see the Citrus Berry activate here. Yeah, so the Citrus Berry has been crocked for Dialga. It's going to leave about a third of HP here. And what is Dialga going for? It's going for a Dragon Pulse. Who's it targeting? It's targeting the Smeargle. And Smeargle survives with one HP. That is a Focus Sash. Yeah, and we do see Moody activate again. It is going to go ahead and be the Evasiveness rising sharply right there. And we're actually going to see, um, I think it's, it's either Special Attack or Special Defense. I'm sorry, I didn't, my Japanese isn't the best, but that could be, that could be relevant if it's a Special Defense drop. A relevant, irrelevant actually, well, no, it's relevant because he's only got one HP left. Yeah. Um, we do see Salamence get knocked out. Unfortunately, right there, that Grayson wasn't able to get off an attack. Yeah. Uh, with that Salamence, you know, it's, it's kind of 
weird to see that Grayson didn't decide to go for just a double edge at that point. You know, at this point, you kind of have to go for these knockouts on the Smeargle because Smeargle's a tough Pokemon to deal with, right? Yep, if, you never know what's doing. If Smeargle has a great opportunity to go for the Dark Void, both your Pokemon are going to be ending up asleep, and you don't want that at all. Also, uh, we've got two Steel types on the opposing side of the field for uh, Grayson Garen. Um, Akatsuki must be liking this position. He's got a Groudon here, full HP, in the desolate land, and both those steel types are going to take huge amounts of damage from this. This so Dialga is going to go down here. How much is this going to do to the Bronzong? Bronzong survives, like with a little bit of HP left. So um, most likely a heatproof Bronzong right there. We were there. talking about it we're before. About it right we there. called it. We called it for you guys. So As Bronzong is going to be able to launch an attack here. He's going to drop up the Trick Room, but now Grayson is down to just two Pokémon. I believe Smeargle actually missed that Dark Void right there. As we do see another raise in special so for Smeargle. So both specials, it's like, uh, both special uh, stats there being raised, um, or sorry, raised and then dropped. So um, Smeargle being on one HP, it doesn't really matter too much at those points. Those those boosts were kind of irrelevant here. But Smeargle is having a great time, even if it missed the Dark Void there. Being able to get those two big wide guards off, really, really helping out for Akatsuki. Yeah, and I don't mind Grayson's position right now. You know, Trick Room is up. Bronzong, of course, is heavily damaged, but I feel like this is going to be a Trick Room Groudon. Looking at that Groudon's hit point stat right there, that's probably going to be a very speedy Groudon. Yep. So I I feel like right now the Browns, uh, the Groudon on Grayson's side is going to be able to go first, get a lot of damage off, but he does have to be careful though because I don't think that the, the Presser's Blades from Groudon on Grayson's side will be able to pick up KO as we do see a spiky shield from Smeargle here. See a spiky shield from Smeargle. Is Bronzong going to be able to use a skill swap onto the Groudon? No, it went into the, um, it looks like it's... Oh, Ooh, fire punch well, into there. Wow. So there we go. There's a, there's a Earth Power coming onto um, the Groudon. Uh, from uh, Akatsuki, and it's going to pick up the knockout there. And wow, Grayson must be really disappointed with how this turn's played out. And we do see Smeargle go ahead and pick up the evasiveness rising again. Yep, and that is the speed they're dropping for Smeargle, which are uh, beneficial in, in uh, Trick Room. Yeah, but this game is over right now. You know, Bronzong versus a Groudon, uh, it's not going to be able to do much. The only attacking move that it probably has is Gyro Ball, as we do see the forfeit right there from Grayson. So back to the drawing board for Grayson. Uh, I don't necessarily agree. Well, I can see why he going for that Fire Punch. You know, he's worried about the wide guard. Yep. So, you know, Grayson has to kind of be able to set up Trick Room a lot faster, in my opinion, you know. This team right now is the Groudon is really fast, and Smeargle is also going to be uh, a pretty speedy Pokemon as well. Yep. Right? So you want to be able to set up that Trick Room and have that speed control under your own position, you know? I feel like the Trick Room came a bit too late, yep. and you have to kind of, you're going to have to be able to outpredict him right now. Uh, so Grayson has to outpredict Akatsuki. So let's go over the teams once again. So on your screen, you can see Grayson, Grayson Garen's team, which is going to be uh, Groudon, Dialga, Salamence, Clefairy. Bronzong and Smeargle, and off screen, Akatsuki Sakamoto's team, Rayquaza, Sylveon, Smeargle, Groudon, Cresselia, and Talonflame. If you're Grayson, how do you switch it up this game? Uh, you're going to have to just be able to read those wide guards a lot better, you know? Yep. Uh, the key right there is that, that Salamence got knocked out immediately without being able to do much. Maybe be able to target down that Smeargle as well. You know, Smeargle brings a lot of mind games to this format. What's the Smeargle going to do? Is it going to go for the wide guard? Is it just going to go ahead and protect itself? Or does it finally go on its offensive, in quotation marks, with yep. the Dark Void, right? Yep. So it's going to be a tough call for Grayson. He's going to have to be able to read Akatsuki and predict when those, uh, predict when those wide guards are going to come up, when that spiky shield's going to come up, and when that Dark Void's going to come up, yep. you know? So, I mean, that's the thing. Smiggle gives so many mind games. And Akatsuki being in the lead in this match, um, he's got a little bit more flexibility now. He can um, really just try and figure out what Grayson wants to do. If he doesn't want to go on the offensive, he's still got a f or if he finds himself in a bad position, he's still got that third game to fall back on here. Absolutely. It's a game of information, right? You know, Grayson has a lot more information about this Smiggle. Uh, Smiggle's kind of a wild card, really, in my opinion. He can yes. learn any move in the game. I don't know what it's going to know. So Grayson does know three of the moves right now on this mural, which is going to be important coming into this matchup. So we're going to get into the second game of this round three Swiss match here at the World Championships live in San Francisco. So we're going to see the same lead coming out from Akatsuki, which is going to be Smeargle and Groudon. And we're going to see the Bronzong Salamence lead from Grayson. So no no issues at all for Akatsuki to say, um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with how last round went. Let's do it again. Let's win this again. But Grayson, I think he's been listening to you, Dwee, because obviously he wants to get that trick him up now. Absolutely, and he does ha still have to be careful though, because this Smeargle can go for a wide guard. It can just go straight for a dark void. There's a lot of options that it can do because, you know, right now this Smeargle's sandwiched in between the Salamence and the Bronzong, right? Yep. 
The Salamence can hit this Miracle, but at the same time, it will knock it out. We yep. saw the Focus Sash before, so a Dark Void is a huge threat. Of course, Bronzongs are pretty well known to carry Chesto Berries, Lum Berries, something to wake itself up from this Miracle. So, so that could be an option. Obviously, we've seen that Bronzong will survive a full power eruption in the sun from Groudon on Akatsuki side of the field. So if uh, Grayson wants to go directly for that, that Trick Room, it doesn't seem like such a bad option right now. Absolutely not. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which one's more powerful. I believe the eruption in the sun is still more powerful than a super effective Earth Power. As we do see Salamence here Mega Evolve, what is going to be going on this turn? It's so exciting to watch here in Game 2. This is the World Championships right now for you guys. So Salamence is going to Mega Evolve here. It's going to be a big double edge going onto that Groudon, which is going to leave it with just over half HP. Salamence picking up a little bit of recoil damage there. And we're going to see the eruption coming up from Groudon. So good work from Grayson to lower the uh, effect of damage there from eruption. Browns on taking that and surviving quite, quite nicely there. We've got the Dark Void coming out from Smeargle. It's going to hit someone. Who's it going to put to sleep? We've got the Salamence to sleep. Is the Bronzong being able to stay, stay awake? Oh, no, it falls asleep as well. But what item is the Bronzong carrying? There it is, the berry. There it is. The Chesto berry right there from that Bronzong. And are we going to see the Trick Room coming out here from Grayson? There we go. So the Trick Room is now up. The trick Room is in effect for Grayson Garen. And he's in a better position than he was last time. And we do see Smeargle getting a relevant raise right there in special. Yep, and um, it, also his defense just dropped. So I say irrelevant, you know, it could come into play later on, uh, depending on whether or not it was special attack or special defense. You know, the defenses getting boosted are kind of unfortunate, as we saw back when uh, Joshua Lorsi played Chase. You know, defense yep. boost just became too much. But Trick Room is up right now, but it's not exactly the best time to be in Trick Room because Salamence is sleeping, Bronzong has burned its Chesto Berry, Bronzong's not going to be able to pick up the KO on this Smeargle at all, so yep. it, I would have preferred to see a hit into that Smeargle slot. Well, now might be the time to, um, as we were talking about, let one of his Pokémon faint so that he can bring something in from the back. That Groudon from um, Grayson would love to be on the field right now. I don't think he wants to bring it in and take some super effective damage from the opposing Groudon. There's a Hypnosis. Ooh, there we go. Blind Out. Hypnosis onto the Smeargle. Smeargle's going to take a nap here. So uh, getting a taste of its own medicine there. That's what he needed right there as Smeargle does take its first turn of sleep here. Huge Hypnosis right there from Grayson. And here we see the eruption coming out from the Groudon. Is Bronzong going to be able to survive this? It does. It's got a sliver of HP left. Salamence is going to take its first turn of sleep here. So, um, wow, a good blind hypnosis there from Grayson. We're talking about how relevant that would be. And, and here we go, Moody. So uh, I believe that was an attack raise. And an accuracy drop. Yeah, so huge hypnosis right there from Grayson to be able to kind of get himself in position. I would like to see him spend this turn, maybe either going for another Hypnosis onto the Groudon or just go ahead and breaking that Focus Sash on that Smeargle to kind of set himself up to be able to pick up the KO on that Smeargle eventually. The Hypnosis would be huge because that would allow Salamence to stay on the field for one more turn, right? Because I think right now the Salamence is about to get knocked out from another eruption, so it, Salamence waking up would be great for Grayson to start getting some more offense pressure out. Yep. And also, Smeargle being prioritized off the field here would be great for him because it's just causing so many issues. It is, and you know, the first turn Dark Void is something that he changed up. You know, he already forced Grayson to go for a double edge instead of a Hyper Voice, simply because of that, right? Yep. Uh, Hyper Voice probably wouldn't have done the exact same amount of damage to the ground and also be able to break that Focus Sash on Smeargle as we see Salmon switch out right now for a Groudon. So here comes the Groudon. A, a little bit of relief here for, um, for Grayson. He's got that Smeargle asleep, so Groudon is might be uh, free from getting a Dark Void here, but he's got to wonder what Akatsuki's Groudon's going to be doing. Is it going to be able to um, not be put to sleep by Hypnosis, or is it going to go straight for a... Oh, well, there's a Protect. There it is, the Protect. So Akatsuki here, comfortable to try and get rid of um, Trick Room, and there's the Gravity coming out from Bronzong on Grayson's side of the field. And we see the Sleep from Smeargle. Good Gravity. Uh, make your Precipice Blades 100% accurate, as we do see an Evasiveness rise sharply, and that's exactly not what Grayson wanted to see. No, uh, and that's another special attack or special defense drop. Yeah, you know, the Gravity is out, which makes it, you know, moves a bit more accurate, but the Evasiveness rising could still lead to some possible misses. Yes, yes, yes. And But the thing is, though, Akatsuki doesn't... I don't think he minds this particularly, because all the while, Trick Room is going down. He, he is, Grayson's still in good position though. He can still go for the gyro ball in that smear as long as it stays asleep and then possibly go for a Presbyterian Blades. But again, this all really relies on Smeargle taking another turn of sleep. It's yep. already, it, this is already, it's already taken two turns of sleep. Yep. So sm will Smeargle wake up and wreak havoc once again on the World Championships? Can Smeargle wake up in Weigard? That's going to be the huge question right now for Grayson and Akatsuki. 
So we do see the, we see the ground get a double protect. Double That's protect huge. coming out onto the ground on there. That's a big deal. Bronze on launching attack into ground on there. The opposing ground on also launching a big precipice blades here, which would have done massive damage to the ground on. Smeargle's going to survive with one HP. What is Smeargle going to use here? You can only imagine it's going to be a dark void should it wake up. Smeargle stays asleep. Huge uh, turn for Grayson right there. Fortunate, fortunate for Grayson. Poor Akatsuki. You can see that mattered a lot to him. As we do see a speed rise sharply, which is going to be. Uh, pretty unfortunate for Akatsuki as Trick Room is still here, and that was an attack drop. So um, it seems like a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the drops that uh, Smeargle seems to be getting at this point in time are irrelevant. Attack, special attack, special defense. When you're running a Focus Sash variant, you don't really mind too much about taking damage. Once Trick Room expires, uh, it's going to be a very problematic Pokemon, though. You know, it's got its speed raised, it raised. It's got its evasiveness risen. So yep, it's. This is the issue. This you is wanna, the issue with Smeargle. You want to knock out. You want to knock out this Smeargle right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's causing too many issues. It's it's such a it's a Pokemon that really just warrants so much attention. But when it's paired next to this Groudon, which is throwing eruptions out left, right, and center, who do you choose? Like, it's it's too difficult. It's gonna wake up this turn. So, yep. Grayson might have to go for another Hypnosis into the Wide Guard if Smeargle does go for a Wide Guard. As we do see a yep. Wide Guard from Smeargle as it wakes up, Grayson not exactly sure what that reaction is. Oh, and there's there's a gyro ball going out onto the Smeargle, which will pick up the KO. So Smeargle is off on the field, but Grayson may have just used the Precipice Blades, which is actually going to uh, not do any damage onto the ground. On there, we see picked up by the Wide Guard. There, a big eruption from Akatsuki. He's going to take out the Bronzong, do minimal damage to the ground on, but Trick Room won't be coming back. Trick Room's over. Well, I mean, Bronzong's left the field. Right. Uh, is Trick Room, I think there's still one yeah. more turn, which means that that's, Akatsuki well, can easily just stall it out. No, I think Trick Room actually just ended. Trick Room just ended? All right, well then, now this Groudon uh, is going to be able to pick up the K with the Earth Power, so great turn right there from Akatsuki. He's having a really good time. I mean, obviously, he didn't enjoy having uh, Smeargle be asleep for that long, but he managed to get two Protects off, which was really great back-to-back -back from Groudon, and he managed to stall out Trick Room, so he's in a commanding position in this game. Those were absolutely huge Protects right there. Uh, Grayson, I believe, still has that Salmon sleeping in the back. Yep. It should be waking up anytime soon now. Uh, we'll also have to see what else Grayson has in the back as well, as we do see a Sylveon. Oh, Sylveon coming out from Akatsuki Sakamoto. Once again, not a, not a popular Pokemon that we've seen too much in this meta game, but in Japan, pulled off a really big win in the, in the hands of Hideo Katake. Yeah, and I'm not sure... Japan Nationals. I'm not sure with the damage calculations here on the Salamence, but Sylveon with a quick attack? I'm not sure if that will be able to pick up the KO on that Salamence from that range. I don't think so. It depends on how it's trained, but you would imagine it'd be more likely to be throwing out Hyper Voices. But with Groudon resisting that, it depends on what uh, Grayson wants to go for. If Salamence is going to wake up this turn, it'll be able to do some big damage to um, the Groudon. And we're actually going to see a Protect coming out from Grayson's Groudon there. Doesn't want to take any damage here. What is going to happen? Sylveon is going to use that. Ooh, it's oh, it is enough! It is enough to pick up the KO! And so there's the quick attack from Sylveon there. It's picking up the KO onto the Salamence, and that was huge! Big knockout right there. Uh, Grayson's out right there was for Salamence to be able to survive, wake up, and go for a Hyper Voice to possibly pick up the KO on Akatsuki's Groudon. But, man, Sylveon is strong. Sylveon is a good Pokemon, you know? You pixelate, quick attack, that's the same type of attack bonus. It's amazing. Like, obviously, we saw a lot of small uh, Sylveon early in the, the meta game for VGC 15, paired alongside Kangaskhan. It was a real terror with a, a choice a choice spec set for Hyper Voice. But that, that quick attack did so much damage. It's probably like a boosting item like the Pixie Plate, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, a lot of players do opt for the Pixie Plate on Sylveon these days just to be able to get some extra damage off because of the uh, same type of attack bonus on the Fairy with the Pixie Plate, with the uh, Pixelate ability. So. That does add up, and that was enough to pick up that KO on Salamence. Big KO there. So now we're going to see a double protect coming out from Grayson. Akatsuki not enjoying that. What's happening here? The attack into the the, um, the protect there, and here goes the Dark Void from Grayson's side of the field. It's hit one Pokemon. Who is it going to take out? There goes Sylveon. Sylveon's asleep, and will Groudon avoid it? No, it will not. Yeah, and that is exactly what Grayson needed. He needed to get that double protect to allow Smeargle one turn to be able to put both Pokemon to sleep. Uh, luckily for Grayson, the... Oh, we do see a Accuracy Rise sharply on Smeargle. And that is an attack as well. Yeah, so that's exactly what Grayson needed to be able to set up a position for him to be able to win. Yeah. Uh, Groudon has not taken his first turn of sleep yet, so Grayson's going to be able to get off a free Precipice Blades here. Gravity's still up, so he has no real reason to 
to miss, I believe. I believe gravity's still yep, up. It is. So um, for for Smeargle though, uh, once they wake up, he's got that accuracy boost. He can go for another Dark Void if he wants to. He does. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to go for it right now. I Obviously, believe the yeah. Presbus Blades will be able to to do some work here. Might not pick it. Might not pick up the KO on that Sylveon. Uh, Sylveon itself is a naturally bulky Pokemon, more yep. on the special side than the physical side, but it's still going to be a close call depending on how the Sylveon is trained. But once again, showing how important Smeargle is in this metagame, really managing to turn the tables on certain players, and dependent on what Pokemon they're using, it's really impressive. And there, speaking of impressive, is a shiny Rayquaza coming out and hitting the field. So Groudon coming, using a Precipice Blade, launching the attack, only going to hit Sylveon. It's going to leave it with 7 HP remaining with a critical hit. The Rayquaza avoiding... Oh, but there you go, Dark type. Void. Dark yeah, Void. Go. And there's a sleep onto the Rayquaza as well. So both Sylveon and Rayquaza taking a nap, but a, a clever switch from Akatsuki, but Grayson had the plays to make it happen. Grayson punished that switch right there, and great yep. call from Grayson. You know, that's why I'm commentating and not playing, as we do see Smeargle get an attack rise, as we do see Smeargle go ahead and get a the accuracy, accuracy drop. drop. Yeah. So that's gonna hurt him if he wants to launch any more Dark Voids, but getting that Getting the sleep onto the Rayquaza there on the switch in was great. He does need to figure out a way to hit this uh, Rayquaza though. You know, Rayquaza kind of does wall Groudon in the same type of attack bonus attacks. Most Trick Room Groudons, I believe, they actually opt for Sword Stance instead of a Rock move. So Grayson needs to be able to figure out a way to knock out this this Rayquaza right now. So we'll have to see what additional moves Grayson is running. I, I feel like we've only seen uh, Precipice Blades, right? So far, we've seen Precipice Blades. We've seen, I believe it was the Fire Punch that hit into the Spiky Shield. Yes, in the first match, yes. Yeah. So maybe he can use a, uh, a Fire Punch onto this Mega, Mega Rayquaza here to get some damage off. But um, obviously, Rayquaza is going to take one turn of sleep right now. So it Mega Evolves, getting rid of the Sun, so lowering the damage that uh, Fire Punch will do to it. But it's still got to um, get a few bits of damage off. There Ooh. goes a quick attack onto the Smeargle. How much is that doing? That's leaving about two thirds, but Smeargle, very, very bulky here, um, surviving with two thirds of its HP. Rayquaza taking its first turn of sleep. A big fire punch going onto the uh, Sylveon here. So Sylveon's going down. Akatsuki still asleep with its Mega Rayquaza. But Smeargle not really, doesn't really need to do anything here, going for another Dark Void. And we do see a accuracy rise. And that is a speed drop right there. Yeah, and it's going to come down to time right now. Uh, we're going to have to see. Is Rayquaza going to be able to wake up and hit this ground for a lot of damage? It, it's going to come down to time, pretty yep. much. That's it. And so if, if Akatsuki's Rayquaza wakes up and gets an extreme speed off, or, or, a, or, yeah, or, or, Dra or Draco Meteor or Dragon Ascent, it will be able to do significant damage to Groudon, and that will win in the match. Yeah, so it comes down to whether or not this Rayquaza will be able to wake up and go for this attack. You know, time is running down. I believe Grayson sees it as a win condition. Akatsuki also sees it as his win condition. So it looks like both players. Oh no, Akatsuki's locked in now. So we're going to see. Oh no, there goes the sleep on the Mega Rayquaza. Again, remaining sleep, not being able to get any damage off. Same for the Groudon. And we're going to see what um, Grayson's Groudon is going to go for here. It's going to go for the Presence Blaze. Not going to hit the Mega Rayquaza. Going to do crazy damage to that Primal Groudon, which has now been knocked out. And, and that should do it. This turn is going to go protecting to game three. We're going to be able to go to Game 3, Akatsuki Sakamoto winning Game 1, Grayson Garen winning Game 2, and this is an incredible match at the Pokemon World Championships. And we do Francisco. see a speed rise again from that Smeargle. And an evasive drop. So again, it's going to come down to time. Uh, ooh, time's running a bit close here. But again, of course, you can just protect. That's it. So if, um, if both of Grayson's Pokemon protect, he can take this to a Game 3 and use all the information that he has learned in these last two matches to try and make this his win. It's not over yet. You know, Grayson does have to actually wait. You know, just go for that double protect, if anything, and then go just stall out the rest of the clock. You know, we've seen instances before on stream where, you know, a player might click a move at the last second, and then that actually registers and the move continues. So, yeah. uh, you know, we have to wait till the actual timer goes to zero. Not necessarily... You know, we can't assume anything, right? This is Pokemon. So, will Grayson be able to do this? Will we get a double protect on this turn? And will he take this to a game three? Here we go. So, Smeargle, gonna use a spiky shield. You can imagine the Groudon's gonna go for the protect alongside it. And we do see the protect right there, and that there should we go. And that will be game. So, a great comeback from Grayson right there. Uh, that was a really tough match. I mean, just back and forth, you know, Grayson definitely got a bit disheartened when he saw that 
Sylveon, with that quick attack, pick up the KO on Salamence, you know, that took away one of his win conditions. Luckily for Grayson, he was able to come back with the Smeargle, putting both Pokemon to sleep. And having Rayquaza, you know, he was helped out a little bit by the amount of sleep turns that he had. Yep. You know, a lot of Pokemon actually took their full three turns of sleep. Yep. So, huge, huge comeback right there from Grayson. And back to game three, this is it. Well, I mean, those games both relied heavily on Smeargle. Smeargle really helped Akatsuki in the first match. The wide guards really helped him um, survive attacks from Salamence and well, actually, not take any damage from Salamence and then be able to knock it out in quite quick fashion. And then for Grayson, when he managed to get his Smeargle on the field, that's when all the momentum swung in his favor. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the keys that I mentioned earlier going into game two was, you know, hey, Grayson, try to get up Trick Room. You know, Trick Room's going to be pretty important. You know, Grayson did it. He prioritized it, set up Trick Room, controlled the speed, and from there was able to go for... Uh, you know, he was just in the driver's seat. Well, guys, we're going to go through the teams for you once again. We are going into game three of our round three Swiss match here at the World Championships live in San Francisco. Grace and Garen's team on your screen. Groudon, Dialga, Salamence, Clefairy, Bronzong, and Smeargle. And for Akatsuki Sakamoto of Japan, we're going to have Rayquaza, Sylveon, Smeargle, Groudon, Cresselia, and Talonflame. Yeah, and... Going into this next game, you know, Akatsuki is going to have to do his best to try to prevent, uh, going to have to try his best to prevent Grayson from being able to set up Trick Room, right? Yeah. Uh, looking at Akatsuki's team, you know, there isn't really much that can prevent that Trick Room from coming up. Yeah, I mean, the Smeargle option we saw in the first turn, um, he went for that Dark Void. It did put the Bronzon to sleep, but it, it crocked that Chesto Berry, and he managed to get the Trick Room up anyway, and that kind of spelled disaster for him. He managed to stall it out, but right. The best option I see right now is maybe his own Cresselia being able to set up Trick Room to try to counter that Trick Room, you know, that kind of double Trick Room yeah. scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really his best option. Uh, you know, we see that the Eruption doesn't pick up the KO, thanks to that heat proof ability on Grayson's yeah. side. You know, that heat proof is paying dividends yeah. for and Grayson. You saw Grayson make the adjustment between matches to not bring Dialga again uh, from the first game, instead opting to um, kind of go for that Smeargle. Smeargle. And I think that's something he really needs to bring into his third game as well. Yeah, Dialga is a Pokemon that can set up Trick Room, but at the same time, it, offensively, it doesn't exert that much pressure, even though its ability is pressure sometimes. Ooh. I know. That was a pun. That's there. a pun and a half, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, guys, so we're going into game three, round three of Swiss here at the World Championships. And we've got the Cresselia coming in. The The adjustment has been made by Akasuki Sakamoto. He's going to have a primal ground on and Cresselia on his side of the field. And Grayson's going straight on the offensive with a Smeargle and Salamence combination. Yeah, and, you know, Akatsuki right there probably bringing that Cresselia to counter Trick Room, but unfortunately, Grayson Garen kind of sees right through that. He's going to be playing a faster mode right now. Mm. And the uh, the Smeargle Salamence combination is something that we saw a lot in the US National Championships, right? Absolutely. You know, Tailwind's such a great move coming from Salamence. And, you know, it looks like right here, Salamence does carry Tailwind. That's going to be huge. Uh, Smeargle, of course, provides a lot of support right now for the Salamence. Uh, threatens a lot with the uh, possible Dark Void. Yep. You know, threatens with the possible Wide Guard. So a lot more defensive pressure coming from Grayson as well in order to kind of set himself up to go on the offense again with that Smeargle. Yeah, and I mean, this is the thing. Like, if you manage to get one Dark Void off and it sticks both Pokemon, that's a free turn to set up. Your board position can completely change. And speaking of setting up, we're going to have a Salamence Mega Evolving here, getting rid of the Intimidate ability, going to get Aerial 8, and we're going to see the Groudon on Akatsuki's side of the field going to protect itself there. doesn't want to take any sort of Hyper Voice damage from the, uh, from the Salamence coming out here. Uh, Cresselia, very bulky Pokemon, doesn't doesn't really worry too much about that. But here we go, the Dark Void, which picks up, which picks up the Cresselia. It's gonna put it to sleep right here. So Cresselia not being able to act this turn. Uh, we do see an item Ooh, though. Oh, I spoke too soon. A Lumberry from that Cresselia activating to wake it up as Cresselia goes for an Icy Wind. There we go, Icy Wind's gonna do significant damage to Salamence. They're gonna leave it with under half HP, dropping its speed as well, which is very very important. Yeah, and I was definitely a little worried about maybe a possible Trick Room coming out as we do see a special stat rise. And we're going to see the speed drop, so which is unfortunate due to unfortunate. being hit by uh, Icy Wind just a second ago. So Smeargle actually at two stages of speed drop now. One thing that the Smeargle can do, however, is go for a possible White Guard because, you know, we've seen the... Uh, we saw the Icy Wind, we've seen the Eruption. Eruption, I think, is one of the only ways that 
it can possibly hit that Salamence. Not sure if it has a possible hidden power ice. Yep. Yeah, we, we never know what kind of crazy techs people bring to the World Championships as we do see Salamence switch out. So Salamence, Salamence is going to lead the field now. Bronzon's coming in. Smeargle is going to use Wide Guard. It has Wide Guard. It's using it, protecting against any sort of eruption play coming out from Akatsuki's side of the field. So both Pokemon being protected from eruption there. And Cresselia is going to launch a Psychic onto the Bronzon which isn't going to do that much damage because it resists. Great switch right there as we see Smeargle go ahead and get a... I believe that was a Accuracy Rise. And I, I just missed the uh, I just missed the drop, I'm afraid. Thanks for helping me, though. Dude, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I tried. Well, we know what the boost is, so the Accuracy Rise is significant. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, Smeargle does have to watch out. Like, if Bronzon can somehow maybe set up a Trick Room, then that'd be great. But it's, it's, it's tough, you know, you're going to be taking the Eruption we do see the Psychic come out from Cresselia, though. An interesting move from Cresselia, not something that we see too often. Nope. But that was a beautiful switch by Grayson right there to predict that, as we do see Grayson switch Bronzong again. It's a, it's a revolving door of Pokemon here at the World Championship. Salamence is going to hit the field once again, and the Groudon is going to use the Earth Power onto Smeargle. Doesn't want to see it on the field anymore. Smeargle is now going to be knocked out. So a key part of Grayson's winning strategy from before has left the field. And we're going to see the Trick Room coming out from Akatsuki's own Cresselia. So he's actually just set it up for Grayson. Yeah, and this could be a situation where both Bronzong or Groudon can come in pretty easily. Groudon can exert a lot of pressure onto this Groudon. Not necessarily the Cresselia. Uh, if you go for the Bronzong switch in, you can go ahead and try to go for more some more blind hypnosis, right? As we do see Groudon switch in instead. Yeah, so it depends on how this uh, Cresselia has been trained, because maybe Cresselia could actually use Skill Swap onto um, Akatsuki's Groudon to protect it from a possible Precipice Blaze from Grayson. That's a, that's a possibility. We've seen Trick Room, Icy Wind, and Psychic so far. It does have a fourth move. Could be that Skill Swap, which is going to be so important. Uh, it's going to be really close right now. You know, damage has barely been done on Akatsuki, but you still can't count on Grayson. You know, this Groudon can easily go for a very powerful press of Blades. Could possibly even get a critical hit. Yeah, that, exactly. that's an option. Changes uh, the game. Cresselia might, could possibly go for an option to reverse that Trick Room. Or Icy Wind will be able to pick up the KO on Salamence as well. There's a lot of options going into this turn. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Akatsuki might be uh, kicking himself a little bit for setting up the Trick Room for Grayson, whose team does seem to prefer that style of mode. And we've got the Icy Wind here coming out from Cresselia. It's going to pick up the knockout onto the Salamence, so Salamence isn't something he has to worry about anymore. And the speed drop onto Groudon, obviously beneficial in Trick Room, but it gets a little bit of chip damage. Let's see how um, Grayson's going to counter this. He's going to use the Precipice Blades and the Levitate ability activating Cresselia. How much will this do to Groudon? Groudon surviving Ooh. with 18 HP there, so that is obviously a way that Groudon has been trained. Earth Power coming out now. Is it going to pick up the knockout? It is. There goes Groudon on Grayson's side of the field. Akatsuki celebrating there. Beautiful Huge. moment. Huge right there. That's exactly what Akatsuki needed to seal the deal, yep. as uh, Bronzong is going to be the last Pokemon to come out, and that should do it. You know, Bronzong has no offensive pressure whatsoever. And that's uh, a 4-0 that's a right there. Clean victory right there. Not necessarily, you know, Bronzong could go for a Gyro Ball if it really wants to. But it's yeah, it's okay, close, it's but yeah, it's close, enough. but we do see the ground switch, switch up. Out there instead. we go. A clever switch from Akatsuki there, just maintaining his clean sheet for this game. But a really commanding performance there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. As we do see uh, Sylveon come in, the gyro ball does connect onto it. Good amount of damage. All right, amount of damage, and the Cresselia is going to go for the Psychic here. Not going to do much. We saw it last game. It doesn't do much to that Bronzong, but Bronzong isn't in the best of positions here, is he? No, I mean, like I said, it has absolutely zero offense pressure as we do see the forfeit from Grayson's side. Oh. And you saw Grayson there shaking his head, not appreciating um, how that turned out for him in the end.